In this episode, we're going to talk about using star ratings in your workflow. First, let's start by gaining access to the star ratings feature inside of Photoshop Elements. To do this, navigate to the View tab and click on this Details button. And while we're at it, let's navigate back to the View tab and turn on File Names. This will come in handy later on. Once that feature has been turned on, you should see stars under each photograph as we see here. Now let's talk about each star and what they represent. Many photographers will use stars to rank their photos from best to worst. One star being that not so great image, all the way up to five stars being their very best images. However, I've taken a different approach to using star ratings. Let's face it. We all have lives outside of Photoshop, so I don't want to spend any more time using it than I have to. So for me, star ratings are a way to help me organize my photos, but also tells me what I'm doing to these photographs. Let me show you what I'm talking about. After I've taken the time to download these images, the natural thing we all want to do is take a look at our images to see what we've gotten. This is a great time for us to start marking our photographs with these stars and deciding which images we want to keep and which images we want to reject. For me, star ratings is a great way to do this. So I'm going to take you through a hypothetical situation. I've got some photographs downloaded in here and I'm going to go through and begin making my selection process for images that I want to keep and images that I might want to reject. So as I'm looking through here, Let's just say, I like this one, I like this one, I like this one, I like this one. For me, one star means it's a good image. This image has potential. Chances are it's going to get edited, but maybe it requires a closer look. However, if I at least flag it with one star now, and then I get sidetracked and have to come back to this later, I can easily find all of my one star images and then make my final selections there. If I scroll down, for example, to say these images of the animals, I can make a decision here. I like this one. I like this one. I see I've got two images of the wolves here, this one and this one. They look pretty similar, but I like them. I'll make my final decision later. I'm going to scroll down a little bit farther. And here I can see some other images that maybe didn't come out that great. Exposure wasn't that well. These are dark. So I'm going to give five stars to the images that I don't like so that I can easily find them later. Now that I've gone through and given the star ratings to my favorite images, and five stars to the ones that I want to reject, I'm going to start with the five star images that I want to reject first. And here's how we're going to do that. Once I navigate up here to the upper right hand corner, I see that there's a ratings category. This is my way of searching for the stars. So if I choose five stars, I'm going to get just the photographs that I flagged as five stars. And I know that all of these are bad exposures Maybe they're blurry, maybe they're, they're overexposed, something to that sort. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them by hitting Command A on a Mac or Control A on a PC. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete these images from my catalog. There's no need for them to be in here. At this point, if I delete them, I have an option where I can also delete them from the hard drive. I'm not going to do that at this point. I'm just going to hit OK and I'm going to let those images be deleted from my catalog. Now if I uncheck these star ratings at the upper right hand corner and I choose the one stars, now I see all of my favorite images that potentially want to get edited at some point. Let's take a look at those two pictures of the baby wolf here. I'm going to give them two stars as a temporary just so that I can easily isolate those two items by themselves and I'm going to use my zoom tool to zoom in and when I do this I'll notice that both of these images are relatively similar and so I don't necessarily need to have both of them 
So I'm going to choose my favorite. I kind of like his expression here on the right. So that one's going to remain one star for my favorite images. And this one is going to get unstarred altogether. So now when I look for my favorite images by going back up to the ratings and choosing one star. And I'm going to zoom out so you can better see here. Now I've gotten all of my favorite images that at some point I hope to sit down and edit, make beautiful, and so forth. Now there's more than just one star for my favorites or five stars for the ones I want to delete. If I've edited a photograph, I give it two stars. If I have an image that's going to make it to Facebook or my blog, I may give it three stars. If an image that I want to print, I'm going to give it four stars. So all these star ratings have a significant role in my workflow. And I know exactly what they are. So depending on which star I've given it, I can quickly find what I'm looking for. Before you go, make sure you subscribe to this channel to see more of my upcoming videos. And be sure to click the link below to learn about a brand new training I'll be hosting with details on how you can be a part of it. If you like this video, we're going to be hosting an event called Get Your Digital Life Under Control where we teach you more ways to keep yourself organized, backed up, and all of your images safe. Because let's face it, if your photographs aren't safe, there isn't any reason why you should be editing them. So let's jump into this phase one boot camp, get your digital life under control with me August 30th, where I'll be showing you lots more tricks and tips on how to keep all of your stuff safe and sound. I hope to see you. Thanks for watching.